In this video, we're going to be going through moles and molar mass. So you're probably thinking to yourself, what is a mole? Well, moles are small mammals adapted to a subterranean lifestyle. They have cylindrical bodies, velvety fur, very small inconspicuous ears and eyes, reduced hind limbs, and short, powerful forelimbs with large paws adapted for digging. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about. So we're talking about the chemistry mole. The chemistry mole is a fundamental unit in chemistry for the amount of a substance. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd units. Now, those units can be atoms, molecules, particles, etc. This number, the 6.0, 2 times 10 to the 23rd units. This is called Avogadro's number. Molar mass is the mass in grams of one mole of a given substance. The units for molar mass are grams per mole, and that's equal to the average atomic mass found on the periodic table. So let's go through some examples, and this will start to make a little bit more sense. So for example one, it says determine the molar mass of copper. Now, we've talked about this number up here. That's the atomic number. So that's representing the number of protons for each element on the periodic table. Now, down at the bottom, we know this is the average atomic mass, but this is also the molar mass. Of a substance. So that means if we had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper, its mass would be 63.546 grams. So the answer here is just going to be 63.546 grams per mole. All right. For this example, it says, determine the molar mass of NaCl, which is sodium chloride. So obviously we can't just go to the periodic table and look up sodium chloride because that's a compound. It's made up of two different elements. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna look both of these up individually. So if you go to the periodic table and you look up sodium's mass, it is 22.99 grams per mole. Chlorine, Cl, if we look up its mass, it is 35.45 grams per mole. And all we're going to do in this case is we're going to add these two up. So 22.99 plus 35.45 gives us a total mass, a total molar mass of 58.44 grams per mole. In this next example, it says determine the molar mass of water, H2O. So just like the last one, we're going to look up the molar mass of hydrogen and the molar mass of oxygen. But in this example, if you notice, we have this 2 here. So with that 2, we're just going to multiply the mass of hydrogen by 2. So let's write this out. So for hydrogen, we have two of these. Okay, That's coming from the 2 right there. And molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01 .01 grams per mole. And then for oxygen, we have just one of those, and its molar mass is 16.00 grams per mole. All right, so when we add these up, don't forget to multiply 1.01 .01 .01 times 2 first and then add that to 16. You should get 18.02 grams per mole. All right, in this final example, it says determine the molar mass of CaNO3 2. So this example is a little bit more complicated because we have a lot going on. So if you remember, this 2 on the outside 
is going to multiply our oxygen, our O3 by 2, and it's also going to multiply our N, our nitrogen, by 2. So let's write out what we have. For calcium, there's only one of them. Calcium's molar mass is 40.08 grams per mole. Okay, then we have nitrogen. Nitrogen's molar mass, well, first of all, there's two of them coming from the two on the outside. Nitrogen's molar mass is 14.01 grams per mole. All right, oxygen. So we had O3, but we have two of those. So that's kind of like saying we have two O3s. O3 plus O3 gives us O6. So there's six of these total. And oxygen's molar mass is 16.00 grams per mole. So be careful here, because remember, you need to multiply the molar mass of nitrogen by two, the molar mass of oxygen by six, add everything together, and you should get 164.1 grams per mole. And that, is the mole and molar mass.